I want you to look at Akash's body language right here because he is really fed up with all this. Now, I have to give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of backstory here. Akash is a very easily the most simpish blue pill guy you will ever want to meet. Now, remember what I said, and and, and, and maybe I did him dirty, but like remember what I said about Mike Rashid. I said he was a blue pill alpha. Um, I think that Akash would like people to think he's a blue pill alpha. I think he would like to posh. He's definitely a white knight. As I said, guys like that tend to be the worst white knights you'll ever know. And he's about to go off on these guys. So I just wanted to give you a little pretense here. He has been married for, I think, two years. And if you know anything about his background, which I'm going to show you guys here in just a moment, you'll understand why these guys are just so offensive. Because I can tell you right now, everything they say, everything that I say myself just fundamentally diametrically opposes any ev anything and everything he believes the guy has only ever been with one woman in his life should he be you know pilloried for that not necessarily but it is important to remember that that is his frame of reference so i'm not saying he's a good guy or a bad guy that's not the the, the point is is that when you have a guy like this it is about what the reason why he's going to like lose his shit here in just a second is because it fundamentally goes against the decisions and the choices that he's made in his life. At black, you would say no. Yeah, here's the thing about the clip. Context, like, context. like I said, it's context. It's yeah. us having a good time. It's us making jokes. We make fun of everyone. It's just that they don't clip all the other segments of us making jokes on everyone else. They want to clip that one sec that one section at 20, 30 seconds. Say that, you know, try to paint a narrative. You guys are racist and because you guys are racist, this is why you kick Asian doll off racist. your show. And I don't think racist. I never saw and racist. The racist yeah. I don't. But I'm just saying what they no, were that's trying to paint us as. And you guys, you know from I, I know people who know you. They say you're good guys, stand up guys. So I don't have a problem with you as people. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have you on this podcast. And then you know what I mean, like yeah, sure, we can have a discussion. Give you dab or whatever. Yeah. But I'm really curious. I, this isn't it's a gotcha not racist thing. to like, me. I'm literally curious to have the conversation. Yeah, well, it does yeah, bother me that I think it's not racist. It's self loathing, which to me, I don't particularly give a fuck how any other race looks at us. I give a fuck how we look at ourselves. So if I saw Indians saying some shit like that, that would bother me more. Andrew told me he doesn't like Indian girls all the time. That's great. Don't date him. That's good mm -hmm. for me. But when an Indian says <laughs> that you, shit, right? then it's like, yo, I you... I do that because you say you don't like white women. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. And but it, if you keep this up, but isn't I'm going to that... divorce my... But that's not racist? That's not... What should I say? That's not anti-tribalist? Mm. My wife and fuck a lot of Indian chicks. Yeah. To prove you Isn't that refreshing from a minority though? <laughs> yeah. Look at the rest of the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have a problem with somebody that I feel is self-loathing, and I'm not going to be as offended because you're not from where I'm from. Mm. But if I was black and okay, I so was Alex, say, I'd be like, "Yo, that shit is." Akash is from Texas. Just pointing that out. More than racist is self-loathing, and that bothers me. What do you guys say about that? Like, like, do you guys? So let's remove the racism thing here. Yeah. What about? Do you think it has anything to do with self-loathing? Is there any like kind of like uh, internalized hatred, which might not even be your fault? It might be like the surroundings you were in and made you feel like these girls weren't good enough for you. Uh All right. That is, by the way, the same appeal, the ex almost verbatim, the same appeal that Brittany Renner throws at Myron in that one clip that academics throws out, almost verbatim. Does it make you feel good to, to, to tear these girls down? I think she even does. I think she even makes the uh, black sisters appeal as well. Right? The tribal appeal. Does it make you feel good? But it's not, it's not based on any kind of like reasoning or rationality or even an understanding. Like, cause again, most of these guys, all of these guys on this show for sure. And certainly Brittany Renner are speaking from a position of ignorance, but they're confident in their ignorance. They're confidently putting out this opinion that they believe is 100% true. They, are, they have no question that these guys are just absolute animals, right? Based on very scant information, maybe watching 30-second clips. I wonder how much video, how much they've actually done their homework on the show. They don't, why would they? Why would they got that shit? I got busy life. It's like, it's hard for me to watch Fresh and Fit, and I'm pretty much an expert on the show, right? It's hard for me to keep up with that. These guys don't keep up with them as much as I do, or even half of the guys who are like fans of the show. Them, like when you watch, I don't know if people really understand this, but when it comes down to like YouTube videos, I I do maybe this is my fault, but when I do a two hour video or do a three hour video or in some cases a four hour video, on all those videos, it doesn't matter what, even if it's an hour long video, my average watch time is 30 minutes. 
if, if I get to 33 minutes in an average watch time, I'm like, yeah, got it. Right? I must've done something good. And I look for the spikes and everything, you know, the analytics and stuff like that. Most people don't watch a full video. And if they do, they get it like in bits and pieces. That's why the clips channel is so popular. That's why it's like close to 60,000 subs all of a sudden. Again, vanity metrics, but people want to know when the new one comes out, right? So according, you know, since we live in the TLDR generation, people are intellectually lethargic and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, people got lives, man. They're not going to sit there and spend all that, but at least, uh, at least acknowledge that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Instead of going, I know everything. I know exactly what you guys are about. You guys are the, no, you don't. Cause you don't, you don't have the time. You don't have, you can't speak knowledgeably. Same thing with the cosh here. What they're saying, what the, what the, the little bits and the snippets and the, just the, the, you know, the little pieces that he's picked up along the way, really great against his ideology, really great against his ego investments that the blue pill has taught him should be the right way has taught him, by the way, that when guys say the things that these guys say, they're bad, bad men. And that's all that matters. What are your values? Well, these are my values. Okay. Well, I heard a guy say something that's against my values. And so therefore they must be bad rather than questioning or understanding what the hell they're, con- how did they like for me? I don't know. Maybe it's just the way my mind works, but if I disagree with somebody or if somebody's very like zealously, you know, religiously anti red pill or anti whatever, I want to know, well, how did you come to that conclusion? I told you guys before, like whenever I'm, whenever I'm on, on, uh, with the, with the girls on the after hour shows, or even if I'm just watching the after hour show, my curiosity is how did you come to regurgitate this Betty Frieden, you know, Gloria Steinem language from the 70s, seven, you know, feminist, militant feminism language from the 70s. And you're 19 years old. Where did that come from? Have you ever thought about that? Like, have you ever like in, been insightful enough to that? Nah, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. Right? That that's the mentality that you're gonna get. Because if it doesn't go against whatever, it, or if it goes against whatever it is that they have sort of an investment in and their personality, then it's very highly offensive. Now, remember, I got to give you a little bit more background here. Um, uh, Andrew Schultz is 38 years old. He got married uh, about the middle of December of last year, of last year of 2021. Uh, Akasha, I believe, has been married for two years. He mentions that later on in the show, which I actually watched the whole damn show. Thank you very much. I do my homework um, and. The girl that he's with is way out of his league, way a SMV value, way above his own. And if he wasn't a successful, a semi-successful, uh, you know, comedian, if he wasn't doing what he's doing, if he didn't have, and, and by the way, definitely has the attitude. So, and again, I can talk about uh, Indian men and Asian men, and we can talk about the black pill videos and everything else and how Asian women and really Indian women don't want to date other Asian or other Indian women. They don't want to date within their tribe because now they don't have to. Same thing. I, 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 I gave the, the lecture, I was a lecture. I gave the, uh, my breakdown of how the global sexual marketplace is breaking down tribal identity right now. So, uh, the, the hot girl in the Philippines, Filipino girl on you know, what is that? Kazon City, right? <laughs> um, doesn't want to get with a guy who is five, a, a, another a Filipino man who's five foot four, five foot six, whatever. I think mean, they're taller. She wants to, she thinks she deserves a six foot tall, white, you know, <laughs> uh, six foot three ginger guy from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana. Um, now, is that common? No, but the perception is common. And that's what they're going to, they're going to talk about that here in a second. Well, what about those girls in Miami? They're all ratchet hoes. All those girls don't represent the, 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 the whole of, of humanity. Yeah. That, that's the classic quality woman, idealistic bullshit that you will constantly know. Not all women are like that. We'll get to that here in just a second, but the, the perception, it's not that they, they're trying to get that. It's the perception that they should get that that is lost so lost on so many guys whether they're even well even well-meaning red pill guys that is very much lost on red pill guys and it's lost on certainly lost on blue pill chumps like this they they, they won't say well you know those girls aren't, aren't representative of the whole no they're not and they, and i don't think even myron and fresh they've acknowledged that several times but the perceptions of I need the six foot tall guy. He's got to have six pack abs. He's got to be, he's got to drive a supercar. He's got to make six figure income. He's got to like, like the, the, the standards, the level of standards 
because we have lived in a gynocentric social order that has taught generation after generation that the female experience is the correct experience that creates perceptions. Okay. Nothing but the best for you, girl. Even if she can't get that, the perception is that she should be able to, she's entitled to that. The girl that's in Butte, Montana, the girl that's in Miami, the girl that's in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, uh, the girl that's in um, wherever, South Africa, in Japan, in, in Estonia, wherever, the perception is all that matters. Did it look like that guy is the kind of guy that I deserve to be with? Well, then I want to get with that guy and I don't want anything less than the best. Women don't have to compromise or they, the perception is that they shouldn't compromise. Again, one more time. Here is the, here's the red pill maxim. It's not that every woman will, it's that any woman can.